Central Nehru University, New Delhi, Dr. Um Pokassar has more than 20 years of teaching and research experience and published several research papers in reputed national and international journals. Similarly, we also thankful to Dr. K. Mavali Rajit Sir, Professor in the Department of History, Bishwabharati University, West Bengal, who have kindly consented us to deliver space on this by Is there any connectivity problem? I think so. Yeah. Is anyone from the organizer is there? Actually, Netuk is spoken. Let us go. again. I am. I am going to start. Due to that, I am very apology here. At the very outset, it is my opportunity to express my deep sense of sincere gratitude to Dr. Anil Sundar Bora, Regional Director, IGNO, Zorhat Regional Center, Dr. Suresh Kumar, one of the distinguished researcher in the field of social science research, yeah. and Assistant Director of Research, research, research Indian Council of Historical Research. New Delhi, Dr. Umpokas, Professor, School of Humanities and Social Science and Executive Director, Center for Human Welfare and Empowerment, National Law University, Zutpur, Rajasthan, Professor K. Mabali Rajan of Vishwavarti University, Santi Niketan, West Bengal, esteemed principal friends, faculty member of different colleges of the country, learned scholars presence in this national webinar, jointly organized by Department of Educations and Geography in collaboration of with Igno Jorhat Asham. Respected scholars, we know that knowledge is the driving force in a rapidly changing globalized economy and society. A, society, a, a country can develop without natural resources, but no country can develop without adequate human resources. After independence, education has regarded as an important public good, but gradually this 
ideas have been sinking down. The adoption of LPG policy in the name of economic reforms has changed the status of education and turned it into a tradable commodity. Higher education is now a profitable business. Anyway, this issue is a, another, another debatable sector. In spite of it, it is to be noted that it is pertinent to lay down specific and concrete norms and standards on private education by the government. Otherwise, publicly administered higher educational institutions will pave their way to their own cremity and gown in near future. I have a small request, please unmute. Uh, I request everybody to unmute, then connectivity will be a little better. Sorry, sorry, please, please mute yourself. Please mute yourself all, except the organizer. Hello. Today we are very sorry that network is disturbing us. But in spite of this, again, I make a apology first. The adopted theme of the national webinar stands not only highly prudent bearing the harassing impact, but also uh, thought-provoking during the COVID-19 pandemic. It is, it, is, it is now my opportunity to outline in brief on this vital issue. Pandemic that has shattered the economic around the world has also bettered education system in developing and developed countries. More than 1.5 billion students, close to 90% of all primary, secondary, and tertiary learners in the world are no longer able to physically go to school. The impact has been dramatic and transformative as educators scramble to put in, the pl in place workable short-term solution for remote teaching and learning, particularly in emerging market where students and schools face additional challenges related to financial and available infrastructure. While each level of education faces unique challenges, it is the higher education segment that may end up by necessity triggering uh, a la learning education. Universities are distinct in that, in that their students are both old enough to handle the rigorous online work and technologically civil enough to navigate the new platform. The real challenge lies for the institu institution in which they have enrolled. Can traditional campus-based universities adapt these solutions by the, the right technologies and approaches for educating and engaging their students? The success and failures that unfold should give us all better graphs 
of what what is possible more fundamentally covid 19 is causing us to challenge deep rooted notion of when where and how we deliver education of the role of colleges and universities importance of lifelong learning and the distinction we draw between traditional and non traditional learners turning to our country it is seen that technology can enable different teaching methodologies and also allow teaching teaching a large number of people across the country in a country like india we do not have enough teachers and or easy access to good institution we should, we should therefore adopt a focus systematic program of using of using the power of technology to enable learning however while technology is enabling it can also be limiting especially in india where basic access is an excellence not even a student has a computer a fast streaming internet at home this leads to issue with attendance and participation in outline session in online session a survey by iit kanpur revealed that 9.3% of its 2789 students were not able to download the material sent by the institute or study study online only 34.1% of them had internet connection well enough for streaming real time lecture another survey conducted by local circle among 25000 respondent found that only 57 Uh, students 57% student had required hardware computer and print out at home to attend online classes the advantage of online education is for is for universities like delhi's indira gandhi national open university igno which is which offers a distinct things and is able to effectively utilize technology if university can enforce zoom teaching if classes are taken to nodal classes and the institution takes the responsibility to connect student there and this can work well but downside is that if done badly it will another legitimization of bad and meaningless out online education of course most most educators across the institution agree that there is a need to invest in creating standard 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 online education platform not using apps google hangout only and to train both students and teachers only highlights the necessity to introspect on the nature of this platform and how the students are taught during the different online tools and method while keeping the accessibility and equity challenges in mind there is also need to understand all this across academic discipline and institution it is also argued that our state assam is flood affected state almost 23 districts of the state have been facing severe flood pro- problem since a couple of years under this critical system how is it possible to continue online system education here what will be the alternative solution of the colleges located in this region these are the vital questions in this regards in this national arena another pivotal issue is that covid 19 has also broadened the prospect of higher education than before besides certain areas in which uh, country needs to bring changes in the higher education it must be stressed for creative research for which society can be benefited an increase in technical te- uh, technical and vocational education for larger section of our population at the same time it is my personal observations that our institutions must have generated new localized multi dimensional economic formation in order to rescue the institution in the days to come moreover introduction of new education policy by the government has also paved the way for a new opportunities and and challenges in the context of future course of existence of higher education in india respected scholars the novel missions to hold this national webinar is that we are emphasizing and trying our humble endeavor to establish a strong root of higher education for today and tomorrow in entire country in fact date of education is the date of man not in physical terms but in terms of identity and roots 
over and above it is the it is the fact covid 19 has struck our education system like an light, lightning bolt and second it to its core just as first industrial revolution forced today's system of education we can ex expect a different kind of educational model to emerge from covid 19 anyway our invited distinguished scholars will be hopefully able to reflect the various ramifications of this vital issue on the basis of empirical and uh, richly documented evidences. At last, conveying, I have, uh, conveying my again deep sense of gratitude and also the, we have faced uh, many lot of uh, trouble for network program. Again, uh, for that circumstances, I beg your apology again. Thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you, Principal Sir. You have delivered a very meaning and dogmatic welcome address, and it has opened a new academic avenue. Thank you, sir. Now I requested to Professor Runu Bora, Assistant Coordinator, to continue the remaining part of the webinar. Thank you, Professor Omal Jyoti Siri. Namaskar and good morning to all of you. Respected participant, respected principal sir, respected inaugurator sir, respected resource person and the participants. We are very pleased to announce that more than 2000 participants, almost all the states of country have participated in this webinar. Thank you all for your participation. My heartfelt welcome to all of you. Now, we are going to the main agenda of our today's webinar. Now, now may I request our distinguished delegate, Dr. Anil Sondra to deliver his inaugural speech. Now, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. okay, sir. Please, please mute yourself. May I request all the participants and uh, organizers to mute? Only then there will be no echo. Kindly mute everybody, please. When your time will be there, you can unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Now it will be a little clear voice. Uh, respected uh, principal of uh, Sinamura College, Dr. Anjan Saikia. Respected Dr. Suresh Kumar from Indian Council of Historical Research. My dear friend, Dr. Om Prakash from National Law University, Jodhpur. Respected uh, professors of Sinamura College, All the participants from different parts of the country. I have seen a good number of students who are taking part this taking part in this webinar. This is a very good sign. Sign. Uh, let me start with a small presentation. I am sharing the presentation. Okay, uh, time allotted to me is 20 minutes, so I'll, I'll take less than that, in fact. We all know about the present pandemic situation and how to go about to continue education during this pandemic period is a big question, is a huge question. In one side, we are talking about online education and on the other side, we have the problem of connectivity, we have problem of infrastructure, we have other problems like flood, erosion in our country. So how to go about? Pandemic and disasters, other disasters is one side of the problem. The other side of the problem is quality and quantity of education in, in the country. 
we are very lucky to have a new education policy after a long time and a lot of things are going to be changed a lot of challenges we are going to face to implement this policy into reality so many many things are coming in the field of education in the field of uh, you know education from school education to higher education to research so we expect a very good and positive changes in future uh my talk as a inaugural of the program is to show a new path how we can uh, you know combat the pandemic or other disaster during uh, which is going on at, at present and which may come in future how do we go about how do we address the education system in such a pandemic period well the challenges in the higher education system as i have said there are two ways we can look into one is general problems general challenges that we have the second is a rare kind of thing which is a pandemic one now well i don't know there seems to be a hang on sorry there, there is a little problem please give me a second okay okay uh, as i have said there are two issues one is the general challenges under this pandemic related to pandemic the general challenges include quality and quantity of education delivery in the context of social dimensions of the country is a major challenge before us okay the university and college yet education system in the country is the, in the initial phases of major innovation and reform to meet these challenges the one thing is about quality another thing is about quantity I don't. I don't know. From control room, some, something is being is being done. Sir, nothing has been done from South Korea. From control room, if you are doing something, then it will be difficult for me to uh, carry it. No, we are not. Uh, we are nothing from here. Let's try to carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Okay. Please mute yourself. okay so quality and quantity these are the two problems what we have we are now you know observing in present time is a convergence of the face to face mode of education and the open and distance mode of education all the universities all the colleges they have started online classes this is a kind of distance mode of education but we also hope very soon we are going to get face to face classes so both the modes distance mode and face to face mode is going to be a you know work together which we can say as a blended mode of education we will be having face to face classes probably after few months but that but does not mean that the kind of online education has which has been started will be not there i believe both the things face to face mode of education and distance education preferably in terms of uh, an online education will be going on you know in all the institutions 
see as we have seen in uh, new education policy in a previously we targeted 30% of gross enrollment ratio by 2020 which we could not achieve of, of course it is around 27% right now so we are lagging behind by by 3% but by 2035 we are expecting 50% of enrollment now how do we get this 50% of enrollment in higher education the first thing we may go on increasing the number of universities and colleges that is why we can see in the national education policy 2020 that the universities from even other countries top 100 universities of the world are going to open their campus in the in our country this will boost definitely our own gross enrollment ratio the second thing is a ppp model public private partnership model but our last experience in the last decade one decade total number of institution of, of higher education in india was increased by almost 150% but that increase of 150% of colleges and universities led to only approximately 10 to 14% increase of gross, gross enrollment ratio the meaning is very clear only by increasing the number of educational institution we cannot achieve a huge gross enrollment ratio like 50% by under 15 years by 2035 so the answer will be in distance mode of education now almost all the universities are dual mode universities they are going face to face as well as distance mode almost all colleges have a center of open and distance education of a central university or a state university so this transformation in in the college in an university education is inevitable these are going to happen now if colleges and universities increases it increases its enrollment we have to we have to use technology to a great extent how to enhance quality and quantity the first thing probably technology augmented conventional face to face education so for example covid is the impact of covid will be say for another 3 or 4 months at least now government is trying to you know open the colleges and universities from september now can we call all the students to the university or the college probably we will not be able to maintain social distance that may again increase the number of you know infected people so can we think of a model where say a small number of students will be called to the college or to the university class let the teacher teach them and simultaneously in real time let these classes be transmitted online now there will be big question that there will be problem of connectivity problem of infrastructure at the end of the learner but opportunity is that we can always keep the recording of the class online there will be a distribution of the class in real time or the learner can revisit the class whenever he or she is free whenever the connectivity is there so this will include a kind of uh, a restructuring of transactional procedure of the teacher in the classroom which may include some of the aspects of open and distance learning a face to face learning pedagogy is different open and distance learning pedagogy is different but since the same class will be going online or the learner can revisit later on the component of open and distance learning pedagogy has to be included in the face to face mode of education the another opportunity the another window to increase the quality 
and quantity will be satellite education which of course the government of india is doing like anything our television or radio these are the issues that our we have to look into and we have to prepare ourselves to handle the problem uh, there are some important issues which may uh, you know we may have we, we we have to give importance the first thing is existing colleges and university departments should be provided with capabilities of ict and web based teaching learning process now think about about this webinar the senamora college is approximately around you know a, a distance of 10 kilometers from a town called jorhat but the college is having problem of connectivity so this is not very you know rural kind of college this is just nearby a, a town but still we have the problem of connectivity so if we want to increase the number of students or if we increase the quality of education the first thing that government has to give importance about the capabilities of ict and web based teaching learning process in all colleges we cannot exclude the colleges in remote areas let ict facilities should be there in the colleges and universities so that they can you know enroll more and more number of students in their popular programs the second thing about idling time of physical facilities like classroom laboratories libraries computer science in the colleges and universities let open and distance education be a you know integral part of the college and university and let the idling time of the physical infrastructure of the college or the university be used for you know training of the learners let all the learners to get the opportunity of higher education let there be a you know center of very active center of open and distance education let the infrastructure of the college or the university be used so that more and more learners can be accommodated otherwise we will not be able to get the target of 50% of enrollment by 2035 the second thing is about you know capabilities and service of large number of qualified teachers we have huge number of teachers but we need more and more number of teachers but whatever number you know you cannot just increase the number of teachers also because there are a lot of financial you know things involved with this procedure but can we use the capabilities and service of these qualified teachers by means of use of information and communication technology these are the things we have to look into i'm making it short there are a lot of you know uh, speakers who will be talking on i'm just giving you one example my dear uh, students are there many students are there you please see the national program on technology enhanced learning nptl you know selected professors of the uh, country are uploading you know video classes and you can enjoy this this nptl the largest online repository of world of you know courses in engineering basic science selected humanities and social science the youtube of nptl is most subscribed educational channel more than 1.6 million million people have subscribed it more than 900 million have viewed this nptl videos we have more than 56000 hours of video content in nptl these are some success stories can we repeat them or can we plan even from other parts of the country now you know professors from iits and other institutions they are doing it but can we include you know the hidden uh, resources in different parts of the country <clears throat> so these are the issues that probably in 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 near future in a very short future we are going to face a blending mode of education you know with appropriate convergence of face to face and odl mode i think will be a 
uh, you know, answer to include the quality and quantity. I'm again repeating it you know, time and again, quality and quantity, both. Because uh, India is a country which have huge number of youth manpower. So we have to be very tactful to, you know, train our young people. If we can train them in right way, we will be the best in the world. But if we cannot train them in the right way, probably we have to always depend on, you know, other countries. We have seen it for last, you know, so many years. For small, small thing, we have to depend on, you know, other countries. Now, government is trying to make in India, you know, everything to be make, made in India. But accordingly, our young generation have to be skilled, have to be educated properly. So we have to, you know, uh, very cautiously educate our young generation. Uh, this is a brief, I will not take much of time because uh, a lot of speakers will be there. Initially, we, we lost some time because of, uh, you know, connectivity <coughs> and other issues. I sincerely thank, uh, you know, guest speakers from uh, very known uh, universities and institutions, Dr. Suresh Kumar and my friend, Dr. Omes, Om Prakash, they will be talking and I, I hope some other speakers will be also there. I, you know, thank sincerely the organizers, especially the Department of Education and Geography of Sinamara College, and of course their leader, Dr. Anjan Saikia. I also welcome all the uh, you know participants from different countries, uh, different parts of the country. I can see some uh, learners, some students from colleges and universities. I wish them all all the best. I'm sure at the end of this webinar, at least. We can have a, an idea how we will fight the pandemic, you know, how the education will be continued, continued even in, during the pandemic. Last but not the least, you know, before, uh, you know, beginning of this uh, webinar, I had a, this, you know, some kind of talk with Dr. Suresh and I, I was talking about, you know, even we, if we see an end of this COVID-19, we are not sure about another series of pandemic in future. The way we have disturbed the nature in the name of development, in the name of modernization, we have done a lot to the nature. So we 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 are we have to be ready to get reaction from the nature. I believe pandemic COVID-19 is a kind of reaction from the nature. And we must be ready to get in future such kind of you know uh, reaction from the nature. I personally believe this should not be there, but nature will not stop. Nature will give its reaction. So even if we get such kind of reaction, we have to be ready to continue our education with different modes, with different you know, technologies, with different pedagogies. With this, I again thank all the uh, you know, uh, uh, participants and resource persons uh, of this webinar. Thank you very much. Over to the organizer. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Am I yes. audible? Yes. yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Actually, <laughs> we have no words to express our gratefulness to our respected Dr. Anil Shondo Bora, sir, who has delivered a meaningful and insightful inaugural address in our webinar in spite of his busy academic schedule. Again, Thank you so much, sir. In this context, we are expecting more benediction from you in the long run. <coughs> now, it is a great opportunity to our uh, esteemed resource person. I invite our esteemed resource person, Dr. Suresh Kumar, sir, to reflect his previous lecture at our webinar. Now, over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes. Am I yes, audible sir, to sir. you? <clears throat> yeah. Thank, thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah. A very good morning to all of you. As today the whole world is celebrating the festival of uh, Eid, so I extend my warm wishes to the whole Muslim community on this day. Today, we all are virtually assembled here for discussion on one of the most relevant topic, 
the education scenario, the challenges and opportunities during this COVID period. It has become possible because of the constant efforts of very young, dynamic, and energetic principal of Sinamara College, Dr. Anjan Sekhyaji, who is a good friend of mine. So my thanks and congratulations to him and his whole team who have arranged this one day webinar and provided me the opportunity to speak before you. Dear friends, you are listening to Bohra sir and he has very beautifully covered almost all the areas relating to our theme. Now, as we are witnessing number of changes in the lifestyle, thinking, trade and commerce and at workplaces after the pandemic broke out in India, due to this COVID-19, the government and its allied agencies <coughs> forced to make a shift in the regular pattern of working. This has not happened with a single sector, but the making shift has been implemented in almost all spheres of life. In between all these certain changes, uh, one of the major sector of Indian culture and civilization suffered a lot and has been derailed for an uncertain time period. Due to rapid pace of COVID cases in the country, the government left with no other option except to close down all the educational institutions across the country. The decision was right as stated by the World Health Organization in its guidelines and followed by many other medical organizations and experts, especially Indian Council of Medical Research, that the COVID is a human to human transmitted virus. So not having top class medical infrastructure, it was a big challenge before the government to minimize the damage. And if the educational institutions remained open, as early stated by Bohra sir, there were very high risk for spread of the virus as it is very difficult to maintain social distancing among the students in school, colleges, and university with poor and inadequate space, infrastructure, manpower, and up to some extent, the right awareness. Hence, the only option was that if we have to save the future of the nation and to, uh, and to stop the spread of the virus at community level, we have to close down the institutions so that students may remain safe at their homes. It was a well thoughtful decision and appreciable one too that led to minimize the cases of COVID in India. This was a crucial time for the education sector when COVID started spreading as examinations, admission, entrance tests, competitive examinations, and other academic activities were taking place. And we can say that it is a usual period of these academic and educational activities as the days pass by with no immediate solution to stop the outbreak of COVID-19 and the closure of educational institutions will not have a short term impact on the continuity of learning also in danger far reaching societal and economic consequences under these circumstances in order to make the best use of lockdown situation so that students do not feel low and depressed as their studies getting affected. It was planned to reach at the doorsteps to the means of online mode of imparting education at home with a motive that by this way, the students will remain connected with the study and in regular touch with their teachers by interactions with teachers and friends, or you can say with their batchmates, or you can say with their schoolmates, they will not feel overburdened with the panic and fear of this pandemic issue. However, this was a big task and challenge both for the giver and the taker. Means for the government, managements of the institutions, teachers, and on the other side, for the students and their parents. With this initiative, a debate across the country on news channels and social media started relating to pros and cons, merits and demerits, as well as on the success ratio of this step. Although online education is a very common and popular tool in most of the developed countries, but being a developing and most populous country of the world, it is quite difficult for India to impart education through online modes. Actually, despite excelling 
in other fields the indian administrative system or you can say that the policy makers have never thought to give any heed in exploring this way of teaching two major factors we find behind this is the lack of vision as well as the corrupt system from top to ground level we hear announcements at government level but execution of those policies and schemes remains in paper however in past few years things got changed and the ministry of human resource development now renamed as ministry of education a uh, couple of days ago by the honorable minister of education has took an initiative of recorded lectures telecasted on many channels being run by the prasar bharati but still there is much more needed to be done so before i talk over the lacunas or you can say the challenges and their remedies let's we look over the merit and demerits of the online mode of education uh, the first merit of this online education is it is one of the most effective to the aspirants and the students of advanced level who will get the opportunity to learn are inspired by the experienced teachers scholars and researchers it can drive away the monotony of formal teaching in general all students may learn at home or any scheduled time without attending formal classes which can save the time and money as very well stated by bohra sir in his lecture it can provide opportunity to learn and understand any topic and sub topics through different approaches and perspectives as one can access or interact with any subject expert the online education can provide the opportunity to learn from the well experienced and well versed experts for example a student from a border district of jammu kashmir or from any remote area of northeast can learn from the subject experts of iit iim and other top class institutions of the country which is not possible for those students of far flung areas to interact through offline mode the aspirants of civil services and professional courses can access the best learning and training without much financial expenditure while staying in remote areas further it can inspire those young minds who could not join the school or continue their studies or don't have time to attend the classes because of their struggle for a bread and butter for the family and uh, some of the demerits of uh, this online mode of uh, education which i concluded are the less important to the mediocre students because they are unable to follow there are chances that most of the students would be addictive to smartphones because it has more attractive amusement than their lessons neither the teacher nor the parents have access so students may get involved in some other activities like gaming watching porn videos etc the excessive use of uh, uh, you can say these smartphones may results in health hazards students can get addicted to use a phone that will divert them from outdoor sports and games and by this way they will become more lethargic and hence the concept of healthy lifestyle may get shattered now there are certain challenges before the government to execute the concept of imparting education and such as the main hindrance is the digital divide due to non availability of uh, high speed uh, internet uh, that we are witnessing in this webinar too and especially the issue is in rural areas and remote areas and uh, what to talk of high speed even sometimes no network connectivity in rural areas there are many areas where you will find very poor connectivity of internet for example take the issue of jammu and kashmir from last one year the government has restricted the uses of 4g services that led to suffering for the thousands of students and scholars as they are unable to access their study material or fill up any job forms although government has reasons for that but this restriction or you can say the ban on internet services has shattered the research progress what to talk of this let me give you a very uh, common and live example 
this webinar uh, could have happened in june when my friend dr anjan sekya ji contacted me to deliver a lecture on the topic at that time i was in uh, my village in rajori uh, rajori is uh, one of the border districts of uh, jammu and kashmir and i showed my inability to join it due to non availability of high speed internet although it was very kind of him that he waited for me to come in the networking area and attend the webinar so today i'm before you people although i can understand for many of you this could be a small incident but there are many students who are suffering from this when i was in my home town due to this pandemic many private schools were sending the notes and class work to the students on whatsapp and a small file of few mbs takes half an hour to download some of my friends who are teachers uh, in jammu and kashmir and they decided to upload their videos of lecture on youtube facebook and whatsapp and i have experienced that it took hours to upload a small video of 4 to 5 minutes also there is a section of society which hesitate to upgrade themselves to digital platform either due to financial backwardness or some other issues school colleges universities lacks proper infrastructure as well as trained teachers you won't imagine there are many teachers working in rural and remote areas who have not touched computer laptops etc even in universities and other educational institutions you will not find technical staff and those are available are not well equipped so the biggest question is that if there are some challenges or demerits of uh, imparting education through online mode it doesn't mean that we have to drop the idea there is a need to overcome from these challenges and in uh, my view point uh, that i'm going to present uh, before you people at the very first internet infrastructure needs to be leapfrogged government should work through its welfare and job oriented schemes to address the financial backwardness of the people recently our honorable prime minister has advocated for vocal for local there are many local products as well as potential youth in rural areas so there is a need of planning such as government can invite the private sector and social organization to give platform to these underdeveloped and underprivileged opportunities as uh, very well pointed by bohra sir in his uh, inaugural lecture dear friends the online radio is one noble way of one way communication many channels already webcasting popular classes on various subjects this is one of the cheapest way of online classes although one drawback with this medium is that it does not have video contents however even then we can make good use of this medium for training students with many co curricular activities as well as many topics and subjects which require only oral presentation so for those areas it is one of the biggest and cheapest tool as radio covers the whole country and one can find it in every house there is no issue of internet with radio and not much issue of weather or you can say climate with this tool the all india radio is broadcasting syllabus based educational contents in its programs universities and colleges can utilize this very effectively in reaching to the students living in far off areas in metro cities like delhi mumbai kolkata the private commercial radio channels can also be utilized for this purpose if government brings out such a policy friends the television channels can reach out to students in a better way since they can telecast videos multimedia contents and audio simultaneously unlike satellite channels Doordarshan has a footprint over 85% geographical areas of India and can be viewed with no extra cost. Government may enter into memorandum of understanding with the private apps as uh, we are using today the YouTube and the Zoom app 
and if not free, then at least on subsidized rates, the access can be provided to educational institutions and to the students so that institution can arrange online lectures. To attract the poor students who are studying in government educational institutions, policy can be framed on the pattern of midday meal to provide them limited data pack to cover up the classes and some low budget smartphones or gadgets may be provided on the pattern of scholarships. However, at the very step, there is need of some faculty development program wherein teachers will train with professional skills of online teaching as the educational institutions are closed for teaching for some time. Therefore, this pandemic time can be utilized in this activity. Dear friends, if we develop some kind of framework in the light of suggestions, uh, which I try to put uh, uh, before all of you, then I'm hopeful that we can do well in imparting education to our young minds. Don't think that this should be a short term planning. We need to make the structure and develop the infrastructure for the future generations too. No matter we face such situation in future or not, but this is a century of scientific advancement and to be in the race with the developed countries, the only tool with us is education and to compete with the world is one of the time every doorstep. Friends, I'm hopeful that the deliberation in this one day webinar will attract the attention of the government and the appropriate step will be initiated by the educational institutions of the country. With this, uh, once again, I congratulate to the organizers for arranging this wonderful webinar, which I conclude uh, with, uh, with this, I conclude my remarks and uh, I extend my warm wishes and thanks to my friend, Dr. Anjan Sekhyaji, the host institutions, and to all the participants, and especially for a wonderful deliberation by Bohra, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You have delivered such an unique, informative, valuable, and knowledgeable speech on this. On the basis of recently documented evidence, which has established a new way in the field of higher education in post-COVID-19 period. Thank you again, sir. For your gracious academic reciprocity to us. Thanks again. Now, may I request Dr. Om Prakash, sir, to deliver his speech on this vital issue. Sir, over to you. Right. Dr. Om. Uh, yeah, am I audible? Right. Uh... Respected Professor Sekia, Dr. Suresh Kumar, Dr. Anil, my previous speakers, I welcome you all. And I'm really thankful uh, to Professor Sekia, the principal, Sinemara College, for giving this opportunity to be part of this webinar. I hope I'm audible. Right. So um, we are, in fact, touching here a very important issue that how this COVID-19 had a very significant impact on the higher education sector. So here I would like to deal with two parts. Firstly, how it has impacted the higher education in India primarily, and uh, what could be the possible uh, solutions or the way out by which, in fact, we can come out from this problem. So if you can see the UNESCO report, uh, according to UNESCO, in India, around 320 million students in Indian colleges uh, and schools have got impacted by this COVID-19. Um, and globally, more than 1.2 billion students and youth have got affected by uh, this COVID-19. Out of which, if you can see the scenario in India, only 45 crore of the people of our population have access to the internet and e-learning. 
So, uh, if you can see overall, first part, the impact on the higher education. The firstly, we would like to see that how this has completely destabilized all the educational activities. In fact, the various activities like admissions, examinations, entrance tests, competitive examinations, uh, which were to be supposed to be conducted by the schools, colleges, and universities, they got postponed due to this. And also the many entrance tests for the higher studies got canceled. So overall, this has put a great challenge to the teaching learning process. And uh, it has made impossible the teachers and the students to physically present into the campus. Second thing which we can see it here that um, it has a mixed impact on the academic research and uh, professionals. In fact, the negative side we can see here that it has restricted on the travel and working together. And some of the joint research or the project work could not be possible due to which. But uh, this has also brought out some positive side like the academicians have got time to improve their theoretical research work. And also they, they could get acquainted with the technological methods. And these webinars and e-conferences, which currently uh, today we are part of that, in, in fact, it can become a normal method of sharing the expertise from the academicians throughout the country, which otherwise, you know, we would have done once or twice a year on the occasion of seminars. But now through these tools, in fact, in the last part of the year, we could have access and expertise of these academicians throughout the year. And also, this has also provided some enhanced and technical skills which the academicians can improve upon. Third factor, we see the impact in terms of the educational assessment system, because um, we see most of the external examinations have been postponed. And also the internal assessment have badly affected due to this. So uh, a lot of the students, in fact, they have got stuck in the same grade class without any promotions. So this has brought uh, new challenges due to this. Fourth has to see this has also reduced the employment opportunities because the many entrance tests, job recruitments got canceled. And even in the government sector, no recruitment is, is, is going on. Not only this, the lot of job offers which the corporate sector has provided, they have also withdrawn a lot of these job offers. So this has uh, really affected the employment scenario in the country. Uh, another factor which is important to see it here that this has affected the national and international student mobility for the higher studies. Uh, because, you know, most of the students, you know, were aspiring to study abroad. They are looking this time to get enrolled in the foreign institutions, universities. Now, this has seriously restricted their movement. And they will have to confine to the, their geographical boundary itself. So this is another problem we have seen uh, due to COVID-19. Another factor is important to see it here that this has may arise a gap between the privileged and the unprivileged students because the learners, especially who comes from the low income families, belongs to the disadvantaged groups. In fact, they are more likely to be suffer because you, you need, in fact, for the online education, you need the high speed internet connection and also you need the gadgets. In fact, the tabs and the laptops and you know, smartphones that is required. So that you know will be a challenge also for, and this is going to create a gap between the privileged and unprivileged students. Uh, another impact we see that definitely it has a positive side also that it has the demand for the open and distance learning uh, has increased because we do not have another way out. This is the only way out because you cannot shut down the universities for all the time. And we don't have any idea how long it will take to five months, six months, one year. So that's why this is the only mode of the learning by which we can really, you know, interact. And um, uh, that, you know, we see it here. Then another problem which we have come across that this COVID-19 also can raise the student's debt crisis because, you know, a lot of students, they are studying, you know, in the higher education sector by taking the education loans. And uh, 
because the employment opportunities have gone down so the possibility of the job market has has diminished and naturally this will have impact on their repayment capacity of these loans as personal loans so that is another you know challenge which arise you know in the near future now these are the challenges now i think uh, some of the possible solutions we can see by which we can come out from this problem like we, we are aware that msrd and ugc have made out several arrangements for uh, this several virtual platforms have been created and in which the whatsapp zoom google meet telegram youtube live facebook live webex in fact they are the agency they are providing you know important inputs to provide the online teaching learning um there are certain e portal they are really they were existing earlier also especially the avenue online gyan darshan it's a very i think my earlier speaker have also talked about it this is a web based tv channel devoted to educational and developmental needs for open and distance learner and uh, another one is the gyan dhara again this is uh, initiated by the igno itself so this is an internet audio counseling service which again uh, can be very, very useful the swayam portal equally is another very important thing and by this uh, the high quality education programs through in fact the dth channels by transmitting the education contents uh, is made possible um, the contents of e part sala and other things are equally very fruitful for the post graduate students and um, in fact the e adhyan uh, is a platform for e books that provides in fact thousands of e books uh, as well as in fact the contents and you know, other contents very very useful for the researchers uh, the national digital library of india is a very important initiative by the iit kharagpur and this ndli or the national digital library is further uh, is going to be very very helpful you know in this uh, e portal e platform and can be very useful for students teachers researchers every category of the learners it could be very very useful um, you might have heard about the sodh ganga in fact this is a portal by uh, ugc in which the phd thesis can be uploaded by the researchers and this is this is a open access available for students teachers and researchers so again the, this again is a repository of a large number of the phd thesis and can be for very very helpful for the you know learners some of the other suggestions uh, could be that under this uh, aspect the educator and learners are required to be trained to utilize the online teaching learning process because a lot of them are not uh, aware, you know aware about this technology so this training is required and also the government should adopt policies to provide the free internet and free digital gadgets to the learners uh, in fact another concern is also the students with disability and uh, those who belong to the humble economic background and such category of the people also need attention you know uh, especially from the government sector uh, organizing online tests and assessments are already being done there are a lot of service providers they are providing these methods by which the online tests and assessment could be uh, organized in form of essay writing in form of the mcq multiple choice questions or uh, even you know the essay type questions which could be uploaded so such portals you know could be useful also uh, for organizing this online teaching uh, in fact there are also automated online proctoring solutions that students would not uh you know involve into any unfair means so there are proctoring solutions again provided by a lot of these service providers and even this these you know that could be useful they use in fact the face recognition technology and other methods by which uh they are ensuring that the students involving into the testing should not resort to the any unfair means so so this will ensure a cheat proof uh, system and also the possibility of unfair means could be you know minimized okay um in fact um, um if you see the who report world health organization report it says that recently it said that the covid-19 may never be eradicated and we will have to live with it so that's why in fact 
uh, we will have to use to, to the system and we cannot say that we close the institutions for six months or one year because we never know how long this problem is going to happen and that's why this becomes very very important that all the learners the and the teachers they need to be you know trained to really get access to education and another thing factor which i would like to talk here that how to prioritize solutions to address the psychosocial challenges before teaching and in which the mobilizing the available tools to connect schools parents teachers and students with each other is going to be important because this is going to create communities so the students and the teachers and the you know parents if they could be connected this will create a, again very psychosocial prone uh, friendly environment and that is that is going to be further helpful a call for a global collaboration between the students academy and industry again is very very required and the sharing of knowledge between institutions globally through joint teaching virtual guest lectures etc could give the students an increased global perspective in this difficult time so i think uh, lastly i would like to say here that whether the educators will be able to rise above these challenges this is very very important to see here because there is a paucity of the contemporary teachers and uh, this is a pressing challenge uh, and it is growing more serious faculty are being in fact called upon to read re re redining the course content to meet the current and future needs so the existing course content also required to be redesigned uh, according to you know the need of the time and uh, uh, moving away from the traditional pedagogy in most average institutions is very very important so i think probably by looking through these issues i think um, we will be able to cope with the problem so with that i would like to uh, conclude and again i would like to thank um, thank professor sekia for uh, this opportunity for giving my inputs to this webinar thank thank you very much umbuka sir has also focused a new panelism on this vital issue who is certainly burden the researcher in higher education thank you sir once again now i request may i request dr k mawali rajan sir to pursue his speech Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. I try to uh, direct my thanks to uh, Dr. Anjan Saikia, the principal and the, my best friend. And also I thank uh, uh, Dr. Anil Chandra Bora. He's a joint uh, regional director of the IGNU. Jorhat Regional Center. I also express my thanks to Darun Saikia, Amal Jodi, Renu Bora, and Simon De Bora for their initiative in organizing such a wonderful discussion, very needy discussion on this occasion of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I also express my sincere thanks to uh, Dr. Suresh Kumar, uh, Dr. Om Prakash. They have given very uh, nice pre presentation and neat explanation about the the present scenario and the the effect of the COVID-19 in higher education system. I once again I will thank. in addition to all some extra information if extra additions i would like to emphasize some of my view on challenges and responsibility of the indian government as well as the the private sector in preventing or take necessary measures to manage the present situations we know very well about that the whole uh, the whole entire world is facing the problem which is very difficult situation 
due to the, the COVID-19. The COVID-19 changed our way of life and even our mode of teaching also. The teaching, whatever we had or we practiced in the, the past, the virtual system of the classroom teaching, now we are looking for alternative that will be forced to develop to substitute the old system of functioning of man machine and knowledge delivery in the field of the higher educations. Even if you look at the a different effect in the uh, different aspects in different industries, definitely the higher education, not only the higher education, even the school and college education totally is affected due to the, the pandemic situations. Even the higher education, where there is the many possibilities and challenges during the, the COVID-19, we have instead of, uh, we have the traditional, the method of the classroom teaching, which in early period, the virtual classroom have already uh, become a popular reality. We had that is a kind of interaction between the, the student and teachers. In virtual classroom teaching, we know very well about it is a kind of the interaction session that is the two-way process. The learning is the two-way process. We learn from the student and the students also learn from us. So most of the on online classes, what are the even we switched to, switched to the online class mode or uh, digital mode of uh, uh, teaching. What are the facility? The what are the facility? We have a lot of facility, a lot of digital learning. The mode we have in expressing our idea to the students and the the learning communities of that. But online classes using the various platforms offer a, a very big opportunity to reach out the students in remote locations. Even though online education has its own limitations. We have several difficulties. We are facing several difficulties in digital mode of teachings. The main problem we face in the digital device, the non-availability of higher speed uh, internet and rural and the remote area. The second one is the, the economical background of the students. The most of the students, especially the subject like history and geography and other social sciences, the most of the students, more, mostly the 50 or 60 percent of students from the, the rural area, mostly the first generation students, they have the problem to assess the internet facility in the remote area or in the, the rural the background. A large number of the, uh, uh, the society still now get even did they didn't get the even the basic uh, the human needs. How they buy good quality laptop and smartphone, which is necessary for the online educational mode. More and more the people have nowadays. Most of the the employed that mostly the educated people are the young generations. They are facing the um, a jobless problem also, which it increases the gravity of the the today's the problem. The online education will be successful only if it is reaches the every students. Even we are in our university also we have. Uh, we are trying to uh, implement the learning, that online mode of teaching, but we are, we can, we are not reaching at least the 40, the 50 percent of students. We cannot reach them of that. Even we, we conducted the several exams through online mode of collecting the assignment, the collecting the, the internal assessment through the online. There we are facing problem. Nearly 50, 60 percent of students they submitted their online uh, uh, that uh, assignment and other things. Even though we have uh, apart from these uh, uh, these kind of the problem, we have uh, several options in uh, implementing or uh, select our learning process through the the digital mode, 
we have several apps like uh, we know very well about the, the Google Meet that we are meeting now, the Google Classroom, Zoom and uh, the WebEx, which are used for online classes for interaction section in modern days of that. Apart from there, already we have in, in India, as uh, uh, Om, Om Prakash sir uh, said rightly, and the Suresh sir said rightly, we already we have an online radio and TV channel already we have in our India already it's broadcasting the syllabus oriented educational contents to the, the learning community. Even we have uh, several uh, the students from the universities and the colleges, they can utilize this uh, very, uh, the online mode of the, the radio TV channels. We can utilize the, uh, by, by the uh, learning of the education system from very effective manner. Apart from the radio channels and the, the TV channels, the government of India is a provided many uh, way of e-learning e process of that. We have several uh, program initiated by uh, uh, the government of India. If you look at the, if you uh, trace the, uh, the implementation of the digital mode of learning in India, the digital learning and the teaching framework were introduced in India 1985 with the establishment of Igno by then Prime Minister uh, Honorable Raju Gandhi. The Igno, after establishing Igno, it many of the it introduced the distance mode of learning. It is the helping doing very wonderful service in distant learning system. If they reach the most of the, the rural as well as the the poor, the students, those who are living in the remote areas. Even since then, various educational and the scientific organization under the government of India initiated the establishment of digital learning platform in modern days that we can utilize the students and the, even the teacher also, they can utilize them properly to uh, get about the clear idea about that. We have a several uh, teach a mode of that. The government of India initiated a different the way of the learning. So through the, they introduced the several system like for kind of the things that we can find the national repository of open educational resources, national initiative for school heads and teacher holistic advancement. We have the CM UGC. Siam Prabha and YouTube. These are the yeah, several options we have in front of us, we have to assess to benefit for both the student and the teacher. The DIGSA, we know this is a project by uh, HRD Ministry project, the government of India, to empower the teacher in digital environment. The many of the teachers in our, our university also we are using the CM and the Diksa program for utilizing our uh, learning to implement the new technology in teaching process. This is a media for knowledge sharing. We can exchange their the view, their, their idea in the intellectual forum. It conducts various courses for teacher for their improvement in teaching methods. That is the most important the services the Diksha is doing that next important the program, the CM also is the most important the government of India program, which aims to provide the high quality digital aids and resources for everyone. We can easily approach, this is totally a free of cost, the student, the teachers and learner community, they can easily assess, they utilize the CM program through which we can enrich our the knowledge and other even UGC also it's also started online courses for promoting higher educational institution under UGC regulations of 2012. There from there we have a, a chance to learn through online through UGC mode also even under the UGC uh, under the HRD ministry control there are many programs the government of India initiated one of the program, the EPG Padasala. There are 
lot of the subject oriented nearly the 700 the subject there are many experts they contributed their e content their video lecture in the, there are there are many scope for it is a free of cost anybody can download the material e content material the video the lecture we can listen on the basis of this there are ugc doing very excellent job for the uh, promoting digital mode of learning then we have other option scm prabha this is also a kind of the satellite channels of uh, uh, through the satellites we can there are uh, 32 channels in the promote the school college and university educations on that basis of that if you look at the epg padasala it is on initiative of the government of india its national mission on education through ict being executed by the the ugc the content its quality being key component of education system high quality content will get it from there curriculum based syllabus oriented the e content the material will get interactive uh, very e content in 70 uh, subject across all uh, subject of social sciences arts fine arts and humanities even sciences mathematical sciences nearly 22000 uh, modules with e content and we, we, with e content video will find in in epg padasala nearly 300 and uh, uh, 3200 expert contributed their content in uh, epg padasala even i contributed nearly 12 contents which reflecting about the, the socio economic history of south india there are any can anybody can assess any anybody can download from the website another in e learning process that i already told you of that uh, in 1985 the igno offering high quality innovative and need based program at different level of the students the university uses the variety, uh, the variety of media, the latest technology in importing education. The IGNO doing very excellent job on promote the higher education in the education field of the modern world. Of the IGNO, the National Resource Center for Open and Distant Learning, the university had made a significant mark in the area of the higher education in community education also. The university, the IGNA University is committed to quality in teaching, research, training, and the extension activities and act as the national resource center for expertise and infrastructure in the online digital learning system. The university has established the center for extension education, National Center for Disability Studies, and National Center for Innovation in Distant Education to focus on specific learner groups and enrich the distant learning system. In that way, we can utilize the effective the mode of teaching through the a different uh, a different level of the teaching from the the IGNO. When even apart from this, among the the expert op opinions on the basis of the, the COVID-19, the modern situations we can find, many possibilities and opportunities would be visible once online learning become in order of the day. In the post to go in India, there will be a huge demand for geographical PPT and video resources for present online classes. The educational institution can establish a knowledge bank of these type of the resources in future. If the university that have, they, they establish the frame, a, a bank of the knowledge bank of the a different study material, different question pattern, a different, uh, the, the level of the material, if you upload, if you have the bank in our university level, that will be very helpful for the, the students of university as well as the, the student of any institutions. Even in future also, we have to update our skill 
of uh, uh, modern technology, assessing the modern technology, which were very important in future. The consultancy for the establishment of uh, audio and video studio will be much in demand, which will be the most of the, the opportunities we will get in future. We are that the teachers and the students, those who are in social distance due to the COVID-19, going to witness revolutionary changes in teaching and learning method. That is the work, the future. We, are, we have to force to follow a different new mode of the technical mode of the teaching in the in near future. Even conducting the exam also, we have to follow uh, in new changes. We have to adopt the new changes. Academician, those the teachers and the other academic person will have to find out a mechanism for affecting monitoring online classes and the evaluation of the, the student progress in near future. That way, according to the, the data, we can say is that what are the challenges we have of that? Even though the country has been adopting to the new age learning, but that still lies on obstacle in making of vision entirely successful. According to the, uh, uh, the new data, nearly 50 to 60% of the students have access to the internet and thus to early learning, e learning of this. The students residing in rural area are still very much deprived of the latest advancement and technology. Therefore, it's hampering the, their lifestyle, even the, the way of the mode of learning, the hampering the causes of the online learning and teaching. Now, virtual classroom are not only dependent on e-lecture, but also require one to have us as the, the e-content, online study materials, practice seats, etc. We are lag behind that. We are not fully equipped to make education reach all the corners of the nation via digital platform on online classroom. That is the, the challenges we have. Yeah, we, we will face in future also the new challenges and new solutions only will make our educational system effective and more competitive. And these few words we in modern days are due to the COVID-19, we have we have to face several the challenges in future. We have several responsibility to solve the problem to uh, reach our the destiny in proper way, in proper the mode of the learning process in future. In this way, I once again I thank uh, uh, Dr. Anjan Saikya and other organizing committee member of the, the very good, uh, the excellent the discussion on the the COVID-19 and its uh, uh, causes and responsible for uh, maybe the promotion of the higher education and maybe the, the effect in the higher education system. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Dr. Rajan sir has immensely postulated every deliberation on this burning issue. In fact, this issue has projected in a in such a way that we must think in a new way post COVID period. Thank you, sir, for your valuable, thought provoking, insightful, knowledgeable, lucid, and innovative lecture. Once again, thank you so much. Now I request Professor Professor Haralisa, coordinator IQAC of our college, to pursue discussion on the topic and announcement of feedback of this webinar, including word of thanks. Okay. 
I'm audible. Okay, thank you. So at last, we came to the conclusion of part of this webinar that this pandemic situation has affected many sectors of the economy. The sector which at most by this pandemic is the education sector. Spectrum of education affected by pandemic situation. And today, in this webinar, mainly concerned with the higher education, the higher education of not only our state, but also <laughs> is advocated by this pandemic situation. And today, our resource persons, including the innovator and our rightly pointed out, all the pros and cons, merits and demerits and challenges and prospects of this pandemic situation on higher education of the country and the state. Now it's time for some questions. Our learned and respected participants have asked some questions. So my First question is to Suresh Kumar, sir. So, Suresh Kumar, sir, are you there? Suresh Kumar, sir. Yes, please. Suresh Kumar, sir. Yes, yes, please. Okay. So, this question goes to Suresh Kumar, sir. So this question is asked the YouTube link by Kamal Khatra. He asked, Sir, how can we indulge rural area students more for participation in online education system? Sir, 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 there are some serious constraints of digital network. Uh, sir, uh, there is a lot of nice. Will you please repeat the question and uh, mute the audio of other participants? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, Madam, sir, there is a, there, uh, sir, there's a lot of nice and I couldn't hear you. Please mute the speaker of all the participants and read the question. Okay, okay. So I request all participants to mute their uh, audio. Asking the question again. So can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Uh, sir, I can hear you, but, but too much noise is coming, sir. Everybody is speaking. Okay, okay. So this question is from this question is from Kamal Khatra. Yes, sir. So question is okay. The question is like this, sir. How yes. can we indulge rural area students more for participation in online education? are some serious constraints of digital network. Okay. Uh, sir, as I have uh, stated in uh, my presentation, that the rulers and the remote areas uh, of India, uh, they are lacking the internet infrastructure and there is a problem of, uh, you can say, high-speed internet connectivity and uh, I also face problem many times when I visit my hometown. So the government needs to uh, make a plan to 
develop the infrastructure in the rural and remote areas, especially in the government institution. Because when we see the condition of government institutions in these rural areas, we'll find that uh, uh, the uh, government education, especially the government educational institutions, they lack the infrastructure, they lack the adequate space, and they, you can say, lack the uh, technical uh, staff uh, in those institutions. So government need to, you can say, build up the internet uh, infrastructure in these schools, colleges, and, and universities. And for that, government take the help of the private sector and the social organizations. And by doing that, uh, you can say we can involve the youth of these areas uh, with the, the technical development. So without developing uh, the internet facilities in these areas, I think it is very difficult to, you can say, connect the youth. Hello. 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 You're audible, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, my, my point is that we have we have to develop the infrastructure uh, uh, in the remote and uh, you can say in the rural and the remote areas. The government should come up with a plan uh, to provide the adequate uh, internet infrastructure development in the government institutions like universities and colleges. Are you satisfied, sir? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. So it is very much, very much that government has a major role to play actually to provide this internet facilities and other digital facilities in the rural areas so that our students of rural area can avail the facilities of online so you gave a very satisfying answer by taking the example of your own area so thank you very much sir so now the second question is to Om Prakash, sir. So, Om Prakash, sir, are you there? Om Prakash, sir. Right, right, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, this question is from Hiranya Sharma, YouTube link. Asked, you told many problems of online education but do you think that is fruitful method to improve our education system technically this is the question yeah in fact see uh, if we have to really see diagnose the problem is if a patient is suffering from a from a disease first we need to diagnose what is the problem is then only we can go for the solutions so that's why diagnosing the issue is very, very important. Because unless we know the really the real ground situation, that what are the problems, we cannot propose a possible solutions for that. So that's why in the first part, I have tried to see the various issues and problems which the online education is, is facing. And then we have tried to address these issues in the second part, right? So if related to that, if there is any, any question, I would like to respond, right? Thank you, sir. So, actually, it is very much true that, that uh, after analyzing the ground reality or problems in the ground, the solution will come up. And obviously, in this case, the government sector has to play a major role. So I think, as you, you told all these things in your presentation itself, so I think Hiranya Sama sir is satisfied with this answer. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Umpaka, sir. Right, sir. Thank you. Thank now you. the next is to Mavali Rajan, sir. So Mavali Rajan, sir, are you there? Yes, yes, I am here. Okay. Yes, I am here. 
ओके ओके सो नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन इज टू मावाली आजन सर यस सो सर द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट द न्यू नेशनल एजुकेशन सिस्टम यस द न्यू नेशनल एजुकेशन सिस्टम सो वेदर दिस न्यू नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी will be helpful in our present scenario especially in the northeast so where most of the areas basically in the rainy season uh, assam is very much affected by flood and this flood disrupts the regular uh, the education of the and schools and uh, and all other uh, systems so in that situation uh, is this new national education policy will be have for us or not this is the question for you sir <clears throat> now in uh, regarding the new national policy on education there are many plus minus we have if you strictly speaking of if uh, our on present conditions of that uh, if the online mode of uh, teaching or learning it will continue it will not be possible to cover to reach all the area to fulfill the all the people all the students from the different regions from both the rural and the semi urban area it is very, very difficult to reach them of it there is lacking we have uh, there are many problem in uh, uh, virtual classroom and digital mode of learning of that when we see the face to face student it is a kind of the personal interaction face to face interaction it is very effective in online mode we cannot see the store we cannot uh, control the student minds it can they can on the online mode they can listen some other way they can do some other works also but it is not effective in uh, uh, in a real reality it is online or digital mode of teaching it is not 100% it's uh, we cannot bring in reality of the virtual teaching it's very uh, useful the traditional way of the method of teaching in uh, in india that is the best suited method in even now also in future also it is the best suited but regarding the new education policies i gone through some of the points from the the new education policy if the government engage or uh, allow the private institution or private university or the foreign universities it come and do dominate in indian educational system there will be a different uh, it is only the, those who are uh, uh, rich people those who are an urban people they can reach they can afford the new education system it cannot possible to reach to the all the rural area the rural student they will face problem uh, in uh, if we implement of the the new system or the new mode of uh, maybe if you allow the many the private and the, the foreign universities in india there is the problem we have but the, as per concern of definitely if you implement the new education policies both the positive and negative uh, the way we have we have to face in our near future that is my uh, uh, humble answer i think it's clear right uh, yes thank you thank you sir thank you sir so actually the how this new national education policy will affect uh us will actually depend upon how it will be implemented in the near future you rightly said that so we have to wait and see how this policy is implemented in the ground level and what are the constant we will while implementing this policy okay thank you sir thank you very much so next 
question is so suresh kumar sir suresh kumar sir are you there suresh kumar sir yes sir okay sir so this question is from our principal our principal wants to ask a question to you so in our online education system we have to use the digital platform you have to we have to continuously use the digital device so continuous use of digital device is he is asking the whether it is whether it will adversely affect our health especially the elderly people elderly teachers whether this uh, continuous use of digital device will adversely affect the health of elderly teachers so he want to ask uh, uh, yeah thank you it's a you can say very relevant question and uh, while in during my deliberation when i was uh, talking about the demerits of uh, this online mode of education uh, i have very you can say very rightly pointed out that uh, the excessive use of the smartphone the smartphones as you can say the gadgets uh, can create the health problem for the students and as well as for the teachers too so uh, you can say we we have to uh, make a plan the school management the college management and the university management have to be very alert the teachers to be very alert and the parents to be very alert and we have to you can say fix up a time frame uh, that if a teacher uh, he is very old and the students Uh, so we have to you can say uh, divide the time frame okay uh, we have to be alert that we don't uh, you can say focus much on the use of the smartphones so if we limit the uses of the smartphone and the gadgets uh, we can keep ourselves healthy but if we uh, you can say make the excessive use of uh, these online tools then these can be harmful for our health for our eyes and uh, many allergic problems can happen so as my friend dr anjan sekhya ji he is the principal so a lot of responsibility uh, will be on him if he'll go for these online lectures and online you can say education and the online courses then he has to be alert and he has to keep in mind the pros and cons uh of uh, these online courses and online education so it all depends upon us as it is very well said that excessive use of everything is bad so we have we have to you can say be very careful for that hello oh thank you sir i think yeah. uh, thank you sir i think our principal is satisfied with your answer so he will be very careful while using while using these <laughs> digital devices so <laughs> with the passage of time with the go, with years are going we are getting old including the principal <laughs> so we will be we should be very careful while using this digital device <laughs> so thank you very much sir so so interaction interactive session is complete so now it's the time for vote of thanks so very, thank you very much king such valuable questions so now we came to the convert that is vote of thanks so i on behalf of the college and iqc will offer vote of thanks to all dignitaries and participants who were present in this webinar so my first first sense of gratitude goes to our inaugurator dr anil sandha bora sir he is the regional direct director he is the regional director he is the regional director of igno in the odl and conventional system of education in pandemic period he rightly said that how we can address the education system in a such a uh, pandemic situation for his valuable inaugural address i offer my vote of thanks and we hope
in the near future we will get more resources from him thank you sir my gratitude goes to our principal who offered the welcome address in his welcome address he told about the lucana of using technology in education system in a country like india and he gave a gist of challenges of using technology in higher education in his welcome address so thank you sir and he always encourages us in our such academic endeavor thank you very much sir next my heartfelt thankfulness goes to dr suresh kumar sir assistant director icha new delhi in his deliberation he very clearly told about the pros and cons of online edu education in the country like india he told about the gap between policy making and policy implementation in a country like india so thank you very much sir for your in depth deliberation and your deliberation obviously enlightened all of us thank you sir my sense of gratitude goes to om prakash sir associate professor school of humanities and social science national law university om prakash sir in deliberation say about the impact of covid 19 on higher education and it, and the way out he not only told about the challenges of covid 19 on the higher education but also he rightly told about the way out and opportunities and thank you very much sir my heartfelt thankfulness goes to mawali rajan sir associate professor department of ancient history vishwa bharati university and we are very much acquainted with mawali rajan sir because he once visited our college in a national level seminar he is very much known to us and today in this web in his session he gave a highlight on the challenges of in the new age education system obviously we have to adapt the adopting technology in education system has many challenges and all these things were highlighted by mawali rajan sir thank you sir my both to thanks goes to all participants without whom this webinar would not have been possible they participated in our webinar very actively in spite of some technical problems and in our near future we will we need encouragement in our academic endeavor thank you all participants and my thanks goes to the organizing committee and at last i thank the technical member of this webinar especially topur brot saikya and his team because he gave all, all the technical support of this webinar and in near future also in we need we will their support and once again i thanks them and at last on behalf of iqsc and sinamara college family i again thanks all who participated in this webinar thank you